Yo, what's up guys? I'm Ben from 606X and today I'm going to ex explain our intake. So, uh, what we have here is a uh, 2 inch uh, 38 flex wheels, squishy squishy, and then 3 inch 38s, uh, and, and then another set of 3 inch 38s. Um, the way that the gear ratios work on this robot is um, we have a 16 tooth uh, six-piece sprocket here connected to a 24 tooth six-piece sprocket. This gives us a ratio of uh, two to three and uh, This basically ensures that these guys these two inch wheels are running at the same linear speed as these guys the three inch wheels So then every all the intake is running at the same uh, Linear speed, so it's like really smooth and stuff uh, And then this is just like one-to-one -one. Uh, 16 tooth to 16 tooth pretty simple um, yeah so one one unique feature about our intake is that this is floating but it's not really a typical floating intake where it's just like the chain is connected and it's like when it goes up it wobbles everywhere uh, we actually had that problem where like the chain fell off and stuff so we added this tensioner Basically keeps the chain nice and tight, so when the disc is being intaked... That tensioner is just there to help the chain stay nice and tight, and I'll run it again. So basically that chain is never going to fall off because it becomes loose or anything. Uh, it just stays tight. And then, let's see. On the side here, we have these sort of guides. Um, they're spacers, free spinning on screws. If you look carefully, let me try and keep the camera steady. They're actually free spinning. Let's see. So all these guys are pretty frictionless. They keep the discs rolling up the intake. So if I push a disc up here on the left side, it sort of glides up and then it spins along these spacers. There we go. Sort of to push it up. So, yeah, that's the reason why we have these. They work really well. Would recommend them. Um, yeah, everything we use uh, high strength shafts with standard bearings here, here as well. Um, one cool thing is that we didn't actually use, um, we use this bearing like cut off with like we cut off like one hole and we use like a zip tie to attach the, uh, the other side. So it's like a low profile alternative because um, we didn't have enough space for the mounting hole down here. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we use like this, this cool standoff linkage or something. Um, these standoffs and it's pretty strong. You know, like it's not, it's not coming off can take some abuse. Um, let's see, we have a cantilevered flux wheels on the end here, just to help the discs, like if they're on the edge here, they just like sort of get sucked up along the robot. Let me demonstrate that right now. On the other side. There we go. Yeah, so that, that keeps the, the entire range of motion of the intake from here to here, which is pretty much the full 18 inches, which is nice. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, uh, mounting the polycarbonate. Uh, so we used a series of like sp standoffs and zip ties. Oh, let me flip the robot over. So here, we have like this sort of C-channel across here with like some stuff sticking out of it to create this lip. And then we just like zip tied several places here. And then on the inside, we have several C channels spanning with like standoffs and stuff. C channels like pushing the, the polycarb into the, the right shape. So as you can see, it sort of like goes up and then almost vertical here. And then it sort of comes over. Yeah, so the, these things, we call them antenna. Uh, we're not using polycarb because this whole ramp takes up a lot of polycarb. So 
uh, we didn't want to use that much. Wanted to stay under the limit. So let me just demonstrate how it looks when it's intaking. So it shoots, it shoots over pretty simply. Yeah, these guys help a lot. Really nice. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, there's this like, there's this little metal bar here that helps um, the discs like sort of stack in. Just nice, sort of like, so they sort of cascade over here and then fall in there. Uh, yeah, so in the early stages of the intake, when we started building the flywheel, the flywheel would actually hit the discs as they were coming up. Let me just grab a disc here. Um, so yeah, if I shove a disc in the intake, uh, this is hard one-handed. Um, and then yeah, and it shoves up here. It actually sometimes hits the flywheel. So we have this little metal bar or metal plate here that just protects the discs. Yeah, the um, clearance is super low, <laughs> but you know, we've never had any problems. So. It's chilling. Um, let me see what else there is. Um, oh yeah, yeah, one more thing, one more thing. Sorry, sorry for the wait. Um, uh, the reason why we're not using 6P uh, uh, chain here, and we're using high strength chain, is where we're actually getting a custom ratio. Uh, so we have here an 18 tooth sprocket, and then inside here, uh, we have a 15 tooth sprocket. I bet you never heard that one before. Um, this one's actually quite arbitrary. Um, I didn't know this until like I stumbled upon it, but this is a 15 tooth sprocket. Um, it's not sold with like the standard gears. It's like in its own set. Um, so yeah, I sanded or like I cut off like the, the, the excess on here to make it nice and slim. Um, and then drill the high strength hole, put some lock bars in there. Pretty simple. So this 15 to 18, uh, it gives a ratio. So it's, um, these guys are 600 RPM going to the shaft, going to that sprocket, going to here, which means that the output RPM is, um, 500 RPM on the top and bottom because you're geared one to one, 500 RPM. And then this is geared, uh, two to three, um, so that gives us 750 RPM on the bottom. So yeah, we found that that was an ideal speed for our intake to be running, um, not too fast, not too slow. And yeah, I just thought it was cool to use these, these um, non-standard sprockets. So yeah, that's about it for our intake. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck and, and spin up.